Good morning, I'm Helen Swire, Assistant Editor of Reward. Welcome to our roundtable on pensions and financial education. We're finding that um, a lot of people who are coming to our helplines um, are quite well informed. We think that about 90% of them have sort of thought about it quite a lot. The first tranche of people that we saw after the freedom and choices uh, legislation was introduced, were, it was sort of pent up demand. They were people who were desperate to cash their pots in um, and uh, had been waiting for the date. But now as we're getting more into business as usual, we can see that people are having more measured conversations about what their actual options might be. Um, but we are finding Finding that this cohort that are coming through now have got quite, as you will obviously all know, um, a really mixed pension provision. So there's a lot of DB, people are using DB for their main sort of pension saving and looking to cash in um, odd pots that they've built up through their working lives for particular events like weddings or um, buying property for the children. So that sort of thing. So they're the sort of very early findings. Um, we have found that people are much more in, engaged. We've had our, our um, overall helpline queries have doubled. Um, so we've talked to over 70,000 people since April this year, and that's more than double we've talked to last year. So um, it, we're, we're greatly encouraged to see how it's all, all developing. One of the key issues, though, that we've got to address is that, you know, at the end of the day, this is about the member, this is about the individual. So whilst taking time is fine, um, for the individual that's retiring today, that is not fine. That is That cannot be the appropriate solution for them. Uh, and so I think one of the things that's beginning to emerge now is that it's fairly clear that schemes generally will not be able to offer the full range of flexibilities. And that's for a number of reasons. It's partly because the administration isn't there. It's, it's partly because trustees are worried about risk. It's partly um, uh, uh, to, to do with cost. Mm -hmm. um, so I think now what's, what we're seeing emerging now is uh, whether it be trustees or sponsors is saying actually what we need to now find is a solution which is holistic, yeah. looks at all the, the key areas that, that Freedom and Choice have brought in um, and that can't be a single solution of, for example, saying we will offer drawdown in our, in our own scheme because if you do that, of course, from the member perspective, that ignores the two or three other pension schemes they may have, exactly. it ignores all the other assets, you know, maybe they've got company shares, you know. so all the things where actually there, there has to be calibration between different savings that that individual may have that clearly can't be done within a single scheme so I think one of the things that's starting to emerge now is organizations starting to say well actually what services can we buy in that gives that holistic approach and I think they got a little bit caught in the headlights if, if we're fair and that's probably because of the the, 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 the speed at which the, the regulation was brought in because the default position, I think, for a lot of them was to go back, to, for example, to their administrator or perhaps to their insurer if it, if, it was, if it was a contract scheme. And of course, because they were existing suppliers, and those existing suppliers, again, they were caught in the headlights, so they were going, well, we can't, we can't help. And I think what's emerging now is actually there's a, there's a new generation of companies that are providing these services for the new world, and that is not necessarily the suppliers that those, those trustees or those sponsors would have used historically, and I think that is becoming, that is starting to emerge now. I, I, I agree with that. I just wanted to add one tiny thing, is that uh, the people we're seeing are not retiring. People yeah. who are, we're speaking to at the moment, they're they have no plans to retire, they just want to liberate, liberate some cash. <laughs> yeah. Certainly coming back to our scheme experience since um, April, we saw initially about a 20% increase in the number of retirement quotes and the number of transfer value and quote request, uh, requests. Mm -hmm. And we also, over the first couple of months, saw an, uh, an increase in the small parts of trivial commutations. But um, that, that um, increase has now tempered back a bit. It's higher than it was against last year. Um, so we are showing an increase, but it does appear that the rush um, is over. So what we're monitoring now is what will be the new norm going forward. And I think there's a question for schemes. Is they wrestle with this, uh, you know, the challenge that uh, Jonathan said is about what solutions to develop. You know, 
not knowing what the demand is going to be, yes. you know, what is it worth them putting the time and effort and resource into now you know, to develop new solutions? Uh, uh, will, will, will that actually prove to be warranted by the demand in a year or two or three years' time? I think, I think the demand will be there, though. You know, I mean, the demand will be there because um, we've got an aging population. So, and I, okay, that would differ scheme by scheme, company by company, but, but as a general rule of thumb, it will be there. And I think it, I think it will also be there because um, as people understand what these options really mean, actually they get quite interested.